Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you recording preferences in Reaper. Now to get to our preferences, just go to the options menu, go down to preferences, and then right down over here under audio, there's a sub tab called recording. Here are the recording preferences. And let's start from the top and go down. The first option is to scroll track view while recording. Now this is only gonna work if it's enabled for playback in the options menu. In the options menu, right here, automatically scroll view during playback. If this is turned on, when we play back from here, it scrolls during playback. We could also choose the option, continuous scrolling. That goes with it, and that looks like this, where it scrolls continuously. But if either of those are turned on, we can use this option here, which is on by default, where it's going to scroll while recording. So if this was turned off, and we go into record, it's not going to scroll. But in playback, it will. But this is on by default. So when we go into record. While this is turned on, it's going to scroll. Just like this. The next option is to show preview of recording items while recording. This is going to show the peak waveform while you're recording. And this is also on by default. So let's take a look. Go into record, testing one, two, three, and we see the peak waveform being drawn or being created while we're recording. But we could turn that off. If we turn it off right here, and now we go into record, testing one, two, three, we don't see it. But it is recording, and we see it after we hit stop. We can also adjust how quickly it draws. The default is three, but we can change it to something higher, like 25. And now if we're going to record, it's a lot more accurate. With a lower number, like one, it tends to lag a bit, as you can see. So we can change this value depending on how important or how quickly that waveform is being created. But the default is three, which works for most situations. Testing one, two, three. The next option is to build peaks for recorded files on the fly, after recording, or manually. On the fly is the default, which is what we've been seeing so far. But we could choose after recording, and it'll record like this. Testing one, two, three. Well, you don't see the waveform, but if I hit stop, then we see it. Or we could choose it manually. Go into record. It doesn't create the waveform or the peak. If you want the peak, we'd select it, go to the menu under item, and go down here under Peaks and choose to Build Peaks or Rebuild Peaks for selected items. And then it creates the waveform or the peak. But most times, it makes more sense to leave it on this setting, which is how it's set by default. The next option is to always show Full Track Control Panel on ARM tracks. So if we turn this off, we make the tracks real small. Let's add a few more. See how small they get? It's hard to see the controls on the record track. But if we choose the option here, always show full track control panel on ARM tracks, 
the track and record is a bit bigger so we can see more things. And it's on by default. Next, we have these two options here. Prompt to save, delete, or rename new files on stop or on punch out during play. Now by default, this is on. So if we go into record and record something, when we hit stop, this dialog opens up where we can choose to save it, rename it, or we can delete it or delete all. And that removes it from our hard drive. Now, personally, I find the dialog to get in the way as you have to deal with it after each pass. So I usually just turn it off, even though it's on by default. But we could also choose this option here, which allows us to have the same options on punch out. So let's punch in and then punch out. And it opens up to those options where we can save it, rename it, or delete it. But this is off by default. And this is on by default. Now down over here, we could start a new file every 1024 megabytes, which is about a gigabyte. The purpose of this is that some file types don't work above that point, so this will cut it into small files. But it all happens in the background, so we won't see the difference. So it's good to leave this on. And down over here, which is also on by default, we can prevent recording from starting when no tracks are armed. I like to leave this on, because if it's turned off, and we don't have any tracks in record, but we hit record, it's going to let us do that. And it looks like we're actually recording, but we're not. So if we hit stop, we don't see anything, because we didn't record anything. So turning this on will prevent that. And if we try to record with no tracks armed, Reaper tells us we can't do that which makes a lot of sense. But again, this is on by default, and I think it should be. So you don't accidentally think you're recording when you're not. Now down over here, we could change the naming of our files. This is the default, which is gonna be track number, track name, the year, the month, day, hour, and minute. That's a lot of numbers. So let's take a look at what happens. The name of the track is vocal, and it's the first track. So if we go into record and record some audio, it's going to look like this. Right here. Track one, vocal, and all these numbers that are the year, month, day, hour, and minute. That's a nice timestamp. But if you don't want all those numbers, it's kind of confusing, we could make this simpler. Let's clear this and hit this button over here called wildcards. This allows us to create variables based on the track, track name, and a bunch of other things right down here. Let's just try the track. And we'll keep it simple. The name of the track is vocal. So if we go into record and record some vocal, the name of the file is simply vocal. If we record some more, it goes to vocal one, vocal two, and so on. That's a bit simpler, which can be changed right here. And we could add any wildcards that we want. Our seconds, the name of our computer, and so on. Now down over here, Reaper's gonna check for free space before we go into record. This is kind of important if you don't have a lot of room on your computer or the hard drive that you're recording to. Now by default, it's set to 1,024 megabytes, or about a gigabyte. So if you have less than 1,024, it's gonna tell us when we go into record. Let's set it a lot higher, and go into record, and it warns us that we're low on recording space. But I set that really high, the default, is 1024 or about one gigabyte. So if your hard drive is running out of room, you could back it up, delete to make some space, 
and you won't lose an important recording. So I would leave this on, and it's on by default. Then down over here, we could show free space in the menu bar and the recording path in the menu bar. So if we choose both of these, right up here, here's my recording path. This is how much space I have left on my hard drive, 306 gigabytes. So we can see it right here. We could also change that over here in the menu. Show free disk space, turn that off, and the recording path. So now all I see is the recording format and the audio device, which we could also turn off here and here and just see the recording frequency. But I'm gonna leave these two on. And these two are off by default. Now down over here, Reaper could use the audio driver reported latency. So it's gonna adjust to the hardware audio interface that you're using. Now in some situations, it may not compensate correctly. So in those situations, you might wanna turn it off and readjust it manually here. But in most cases, the information will be correct. So you don't really have to worry about it. Just leave this selected. So that's pretty much it. That's the recording preferences in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.